and we are live guys welcome to another live stream from men of high value channel my name is joseph darling today we're talking about the power of indifference and i'm talking about now in terms of masculinity because that's what we're all about on this channel we're about masculinity we're about semen retention setting up the foundation once and for all to achieve the massive success that you deserve for your life and a part of masculinity is indifference and i'm going to explain what indifference is this is what differs us from women okay yes it's our cojones and it's us you know having a different reproductive system than women and us thinking and being wired completely differently than women but really what truly differs us because of those things is our ability to not care the more masculine you become the more you're able to choose to not care. The more feminine you are, the more you care, <laughs> okay? And, and in terms of that, um, you, can, you can notice that from my Girls of High Value channel. Obviously, there's not a lot of women, okay? There's a few minority of women who accept polygyny. <laughs> Majority of them don't accept it. However, once they understand it, once they're really attracted to a guy, once he sets the standard, it's quite easy to get them over to that system. But at the same time, you shouldn't care if you don't get any one woman. So that's how you get them to fall in love with you, really. But anyway, the point is, um, women in, in the comment section on my Girls of High Value channel is just proof in my last few videos that they're not able to not care. Like they see a, a, a video and then they get so furious and get so, you know, into it and they can't handle their emotions. And what do they have to do if they can't handle their emotions? Do they just stop the video and move on? No, they care. And because they care, they have to write something out and say that you're a horrible person and how could you do this and blah, 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 blah. That's how women work. Now, there's some women that simply don't have capacity to care. And that's why they're, you know, you feel that they're like, how could this woman do this? Because, you know, she, how is she able to not care? Trust me, she cares, but she cares about something else way more than that. <laughs> so, so, so that's, that's the difference between men and women on a mental space that feminine creatures are not able to not care. So the more masculine you become, the more you're able to not care and be indifferent to things that happen to you and to what's happening to other people and what other people think about you. When you're a child, when you're, you know, between the ages of zero to nine, zero to 12 years old, you struggle with not caring what other people think. That's normal. That's good. Okay. You're put in an environment and then you respond according to the environment you're put in. If you're in a fantastic environment from the age of zero to 12, you're going to be so nice and so easygoing and so flexible because everything works, right? When everything works, it's easy for you to, you know, fix things and whatever. But then when you hit the age of 12, that's when you're supposed to go through the journey of becoming masculine. That's when life is supposed to hit you and you're supposed to be rejected. This rejection is a positive thing. Life is supposed to be hard for men. But the cool part is the more masculine you become, the more you're excited about it being hard. The more you're fired up about being difficult to achieve the things that you desire. Right? You don't want an easy woman. You want a relationship that's difficult to get, but once you get it, the reward is intense. Okay, That's why Three Girls in Love is so powerful because it produces massive amounts of motivation when you understand in your brain that, is that possible? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? If I just do step, 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 I can actually get that? Absolutely. It's the same way with becoming a millionaire. The only reason why you're not fired up about becoming a millionaire is because you believe that you're not able to get it. But if you knew that you actually would be getting it, how fired up would you be? That's what's so cool about success. And when you understand that success is just a bunch of steps that needs to be achieved and, and it's a cause and effect thing, 
It's you being able to serve a vast, uh, a, a vast amount of people in such a way that they find value in it and then they voluntarily pay you money for it and that's how you get the million dollars so you know going back to the to the aspect of of going back to the aspect of indifference how do you manage to get to that point understand that that has to do with your emotions right the the more feminine you are the more emotions happen to you it's like you know, there's an event that happens and then your, your, your brain, the more feminine you are, your brain is now producing emotions. And it's like, and, and you have to react like this. You have to react like this. That's what your emotions are telling you. And the more masculine you become, the more those emotions are being subdued to your mental capacity. It's kind of like mind over matter, where the more masculine you are, the, the less something hurts you the less something budges you it's kind of like you're a huge monster <laughs> right i don't know which movies to, to use as an example but there's some uh some movies sometimes when there's this the 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 antagonist or, or the what i don't remember the guys in the movie like the main character has to fight someone who's like one meter taller than him and it's like massively huge whatever and then he tries to hit him and then nothing happens it's like it's like he's hitting steel or something like that's basically you as a masculine man when it comes to your emotions there's like nothing that budges you nothing that throws you off nothing that makes you oh hyperventilate <laughs> you know what i mean the more masculine you become the more you're able to handle difficult things that hit you hard and it doesn't affect you why because you're masculine and that's indifference our goal is to get to the point of indifference when we're able to not care about the things that are, are meaningless and have no relevance or importance to us so that we can care about the things that we want to care about. So it's not that I'm saying that you should, uh, you know, be against having emotions. That's not how it works. It's about having the correct emotions for the things that you want to have emotions for. So it's basically prioritization. Okay, so in order for you to achieve success, there are certain things that need to be in place in order for you to get exactly what it is that you want. The reason why you're not getting what you want is because you're being distracted by your emotions. Your emotions are basically telling you that the thing that I'm doing right now needs to be prioritized because my emotions feel the way I feel right now. That's what causes you to be diversified throughout the day. And then you've got, oh, my emotions want me to do this. And then my emotions want to do this. And then my emotions want to do this. And oh, my emotions want to watch some Pjorn right now. And you, do you understand what I mean? Diversification is feminine, right? Focus and doing the thing that needs to get done is masculine. So your goal is to become as masculine as you can, which means that your goal is to become as focused as you can on one thing in order to make it happen. Okay, but then you're like, yeah, but, but Joseph, you know, if, if that's the case, then monogamy must be the right thing because I'm focused and I'm making sure that it works, except for the woman brain doesn't work like that. When you focus all of your attention and focus on her, this is what I did in all of my relationships. And that's why all of my relationships sucked or they were wonderful in the beginning, blah, 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 in the in love phase. But then within a few months time, they're like, yeah, I don't like the focus on me being that much, um, you know, because they're wired for men that are high value, which means that they've got more important things to do than being continuously focused on them all of the time. Women want men with options and that our ability to act all out on those options and then that, that have a purpose, okay? High value men don't ever make women their purpose. Yes, they want a family as a reward for achieving their purpose, but, and, and having that is absolutely amazing all by itself, but to be completely focused on it to, at the expense of everything else, 
Let, let's say, for example, you love your family so much that you want to spend time with them continuously all over again, again and again and again and again. Oh my gosh, like you're becoming more and more and more and more feminine the more time you spend with your family. That sucks. You're supposed to be gone. You're supposed to be out in in the world creating, um, you know, being of service to the rest of the world. Because if you are, you will get rewarded for it. And when you do come back to be with your family, you've got the value to bring to them. You've got luxuries to bring to them. You've got trips, travels, experiences that you can bring back to them, right? There, it's one thing to actually be there present for your kids and love them and, and, you know, do small stuff with them for sure. But as a man, your responsibility is to also show your kids, especially your sons, that this is how you become successful. This is how you get exactly what it is that you want. Re having amazing family relationships is beautiful. It's awesome. It's wonderful. But understand how to achieve your potential is really where it's at if you want to become masculine. Understanding that potential and going for it and then allowing yourself to be rewarded when you come home and relax. And then the next day you go out again and fight for what it is that you want. And then for your daughters, the fact that you're working so much and being gone is an example for the future relationship that you want her to have. You want her to have a high value man who has a purpose and that's why he's not able to be with her 100% of the time. And then the, the, your daughter will actually enjoy that process and be excited about the fact that she's not with the one that she loves all of the time. <laughs> If that makes sense. Uh, let's see. So you're on the market for another two women. Um, of course. But at the same time, it's not a priority right now. I'm not in the place where I want to get them right now this instant because I don't feel I'm financially there. So I don't deserve it. But as as I keep building my financials, then yes, of course, the two the two women will eventually come. Two other women. You know, I've got one amazing one. So... Okay, what was I talking about? I'm talking about indifference, okay? There's a, a book called The Art uh, or, or The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F, right? There's, a, there's other books like that, The Way of the Superior Man, blah, blah, blah. All of those books talk about indifference. They talk about the fact that you as a man should not care about what other people think about you. And the faster you're able to get over that feminine aspect of what will other people think of me, the faster you'll move towards masculinity. I have, for example, some, um, I had one guy who was potentially a client at one point and he messages, messages me like every six months and says, bro, when I achieve my 90 days of semen retention, then I'll contact you. And he keeps failing, <laughs> right? And the longer he Time goes and passes by and he's not fixing the fundamentals, the real issues that that is the reason why he can't succeed with semen retention. And the real reasons is because of his childhood, because of the traumatic experiences that he had, because of the issues that he experienced as a child. Those things have to be aired out. And some people think that it's enough to air it out to a therapist or whatever, but sometimes therapists and psychologists don't understand. They don't understand this masculinity and femininity thing. So they just listen to you and listen to you. And sometimes it helps, but really you need a coach that understands these principles and that, that can help you to get to the next level of masculinity, which is where you want to get to. The, the reason why you might be failing with semen retention is because of you caring about your emotions, obviously, but you also caring about what other people thought of you or are thinking about you right now, right? Because if you didn't care, you would open up and be transparent about your problems and transparent about your issues with the person that you trust, right? If you've got a coach who has confidentiality and you speak to him, why would you care what he thinks as long as he can help you get out of the issues and problems that you've got? The, the fact that you can't move on and, and make strides in your life, the, there's something holding you back. And the thing that's holding you back is you caring what other people think. 
Now, that's going to be difficult in the beginning when, when you're trying to overcome yourself to actually talk to a person and say that this is what I've done in the past. Uh, this is my issues. What do you think about it? And then you're like, oh, no, this is going to be crazy. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid of what he's going to think of me, blah, blah, blah. But then you get a guy like me who listens to you and like, I don't care what you've done, bro. <laughs> like, I, I, It doesn't affect me at all, but it's obviously affecting you. And that's why I need to help you to get out of it. I've got one client who still struggles with semen retention and he still to this day is scared of telling me what kind of porn he's watching. Are you afraid of telling someone what kind of porn you're watching because it's sick? Because it is sick. But the fact that you are afraid of telling someone shows you and the person you're not sharing it with who wants to help you that you care. And because you care, you're not able to take the next step of allowing, embracing the embarrassment, of embracing the rejection of someone else thinking weird thoughts about you because it's the right thing to do for you to get over yourself and over this problem and, and, and having a day of disgust for yourself so that you can take it to the next level. I'm not saying that you should share your your you know what you view uh, and and what you look at and the sick thoughts that you've been having um, to everyone, okay, or to even people you don't trust. I'm talking about you sharing it with someone that has confidentiality, who's not going to judge you. They might, they might judge you. I mean, I won't judge you because I'm a coach and I <laughs> I've heard it all, right and. And I can take you to that next level. So if you haven't contacted me for uh, a personal free consultation, uh, it's, um, you know, DM me on at men of high value on Instagram. There's many of you guys that don't have Instagram. And if you don't, then get one just to message me. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. Anyway, so that's indifference. That's been holding you back for a very long time. What about business, Right. How, why is it important to be indifferent when it comes to business? Do you think that you'll be able to last very long if you're feminine and you're going out there trying to sell your service or product for whatever cost? You can even give it out for free. Like if you go out with a $100 bill on the street and say, hey, here's a $100 bill, someone's going to reject you. <laughs> it's bound to happen because people are like, oh, wait, well, what is this? I don't know. Why, why is he trying to give me $100? I'm going to try and run away, right? So you got to, <laughs> this is how it is with selling, right? But if you, if you know people's skills, if you understand how to do it, and you couple that with indifference when people don't want what it is that you have, then business becomes easy. The only reason you're failing in business sales or whatever it is, is because you care about what other people think. <laughs> so if you can manage to get over yourself there, then you're becoming masculine. And then suddenly you're going to develop options because the reason why you're not developing options and confidence in business and sales is because you don't like, because after you've been rejected, and and told that you were you suck and you are nothing and how could you share this and how how could you dare call me at this point in time? Then you like as a feminine guy you'd be like, <laughs> you know, you have a tail between your legs and then you you don't want to sell anymore today. I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna watch Netflix, right? That's that's what happens. You give up. Femininity gives up easily because of rejection because it didn't work and now i can't do anything <laughs> indifference means that you keep going no matter how you feel and if you keep going again and again and again and again guess what oh i've seen this before i've you know i've heard this response 50 times I've heard this response a hundred times. And then sometimes you get like, oh, this one's new. And then you laugh, okay? This is kind of how it is to be a salesperson, how it is to be a business leader, how it is to be, you know, become masculine. Is that you understand the past, the present, the future. You understand that when people reject you and they hurt you, it's because they're hurt. And it's not because of you. It's because they're hurt. Hurt people hurt people. So, so then you begin to understand that the more you expand your mindset and understand 
cause and effect and understand the big picture, the less things affect you. The more you're driven towards your goals and you see them and they're crystal clear, you've got the vision, the less things affect you in the now because you just are going to keep going. There's nothing else you can do. You're just going to take the next step. And then you take the next step and then someone rejects you. Someone makes you feel horrible. Someone calls you this. Someone does this to you. Doesn't affect me at all. Why? Because of indifference. And how does it work with girls? Exactly the same way. The more indifferent you are, the easier it is to get girls. The more you care, suddenly the less they care. It's opposites. Men, women. You care, she's not going to care. You don't care, she's going to care. And that's the problem we see in society today, that men are more and more discovering indifference. But it's a huge issue when they couple that with femininity. That's when you get players. And that's when you get heartbreaks for women. That's when women, you know, begin to, ha um, you know, become masculine, right? Because in the beginning, they're feminine, but then they get, got a player who didn't care, who was indifferent, and then he just slept around, and then he moved on, and then that woman is stuck with this heartbreak, and that affects her psyche, it's given her a traumatic experience, and it's going to affect all of her future relationships, unless someone rejects her even more than what that guy did. And then that guy is going to create even more emotional baggage. And then she's going to have even more emotional baggage, which creates even more masculinity, which is going to affect her marriage and is going to affect her kids and is going to affect her generations continuously for hundreds and hundreds of years because of those guys who slept around. You, <laughs> I hope that you don't sleep around because if you do, you're feminine. Right. One of my clients is continuously saying that if you are male thought, basically someone who's who's sleeping around and having casual sexual relationships, you are destroying not only the world, but you're destroying individuals. Right. There's some players who actually make it their purpose to destroy society so that we can build it up again and, and develop families again. I'm like, dude, you're destroying individuals on purpose. That's sick, okay? And, and, and that's what I'm like. Obviously, you know, it shows that I care, right? My femininity, blah, blah, blah. How do, how do I become indifferent from these things in my life? Seeing all of these problems, the way that I'm indifferent is simply sharing it with the world and not taking personal offense of what they're saying. If, I'm, if I was caring, if I was very feminine, I'd be like, I want him to change. I want that person who has those evil thoughts to change. I don't care about what he thinks. What The only thing I care about is teaching people the correct principles and then let them govern themselves. The more I care, mixed with masculinity of indifference, okay, this is when you get terrorists. This is where you get rapists. This is where you get all of the horrific things that men are doing in this world because they're indifferent, right? They've got half of that, but then they also take massive personal offense when someone offends them. And it goes all the way back to Adam because, you know, they've offended them. They offended their forefathers. They're offended Adam, right? That's not how it works. You as a masculine man should be indifferent enough to understand that if you take personal offense, that means that you're going to attack the other person. And if you attack the other person, he's going to attack you back if he's feminine. And then you guys are going to attack each other back and forth until there's violence, until there's war. And that's how you get society. Did you see the picture? The reason why there's war is because men are being feminine. The more masculine you are, the more indifferent, literally indifferent you are. And understand that you, you're doing things based on rationality and based on the correct thing to do at this moment in time to save the most lives possible. Right? We have to be rational. We have to be masculine. We have to move in the right direction. And that brings me back to these women. If you are masculine, you will not be having sex outside of a long-term committed relationship. Ever. Ever. Because you, you're masculine in the sense of, um, of you understanding the big picture, 
but also, you know, but but Joseph, you're saying that if you're indifferent, then you're masculine. So you should be able to sleep with them and then blah, blah, blah. Not if you understand what's going to happen to you as a result of you sleeping around. Men forget the consequences for them when they sleep around. If you continuously sleep, sleep around with women casually, and then you build up this hardness towards women that you don't care at all about any women because they're all the same, what's going to happen to you? You're going to lose your ability to love. You're going to lose your ability to be in love. You're going to lose your ability to have joy and happiness in your life. Because if you don't have love, what's the point of this life? Why are you building all these things? Why wouldn't you want to have amazing relationships? There's, there's three aspects to this. First, you're feminine. That's your childhood. You 100% feminine, okay? You're a little girl, basically, caring about what everyone thinks. You move on to the next level where you're now developing your puberty, your reproductive cycle of two to three days or every day if you're <laughs> ejaculating every single day, right? We've got a way shorter re reproductive cycle than women. That's when you begin to not care, but you still care, right? And then hopefully you move on to becoming completely indifferent, but caring about the things you care about. So I'm trying to explain something here. First, there's emotion. And then there's controlling those emotions, basically, you know, making it so that they're not so powerful anymore and they overpower you and your ability and your behavior. And then you move on to the next level where now you, you, you don't have that much emotions, but then you move on to the next level where you have tons of emotions, but they're controlled in the direction you want them to be. Does that make sense? You restrain yourself. You have control over your emotions. And because you can control your emotions, you can control your behavior. And if you can control your behavior every single second of the day, you're controlling cause and effect. And if you control cause and effect, you're controlling how successful you are in every single category of life. Do you understand? We're not trying to eradicate emotion completely so that we're robots. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you being able to control your emotions so that you can funnel those emotions in the areas of life where you want things to be absolutely amazing. So how does that work with women? Well, in the beginning, you care because, wow, she's, uh, she's quite amazing. She's quite hot. Obviously, you care, right? Because if you didn't feel that she was hot, you wouldn't care. And then you move on to the next level, which is now, okay, I need to control those emotions. I can't sleep around with her. It's important that I don't sleep with her because if I do, I'm creating issues for her because I'm not sure if she actually feels it for me long term. And I don't want to create long term disrupt, you know, disruptions for her. The only way I can like sleep with the girl and then make sure that she's not in love with me anymore is by me pretending as if I care a lot, but that's fake. Why would you want to do that? Instead, not have sex with them at all. And then tell them that you're different. Tell them that you're voluntary celibate and that you want three girls in love. And before you get it, you're not going to have sex with anyone. And then they're going to be like, whoa, this is different. I've never seen this before, which massively raises your value. And then she's going to be like, oh, I wonder how it would be if my best friends forever was with me in this relationship and we were in three girls in love with this guy. Do you understand the point? Like, uh, again, don't do it yet. You're not in a financial position to do that yet in order for you to retain them. So set up your finances first, right? Allow yourself to be led so that you can grow faster. Lead yourself. Lead others, lead a team so that you can replace yourself in your business somewhat or totally, and then lead women. And then you stick around with them for a while before you have kids. You don't have kids immediately because you ruin them if you let them have kids with you and then they depart from you because you didn't know how to retain women. Or even worse, you leave them behind because you don't want to have any kids. That's even worse.
those guys that leave their own kids behind, they're massively feminine because they don't understand the long term. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Let's go through the, 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 the comments. Anyway, if you had another get discount on ID, probably get you or I'd I have five thousand dollars, but I'm unemployed at the moment. Your hair is looking good, by the way. Lol. Um, yeah, man. I, have you? I think you did a session one time. Yeah, but anyway, get yourself a job, man. There's no purpose for you not having a job. So get yourself a job, and then you'll have money. In my opinion, the best thing you can do for self-esteem is to get things done and make progress on your goals. Then you'll be indifferent. Absolutely. The more focused on your goals, the more indifferent you are about everything else that's going on. How you see yourself is how the world sees you. For sure, man. No, never had a session. Why not? Why aren't you having a session? It doesn't make any sense. It's in my opinion, it's if you're still watching me and you've got the money it's it's feminine to not allow yourself to be led. You don't even know how fast you could be growing in your life if you tried some coaching with me. So um, one more thing I want to share with you guys. As freedom-loving people, there's probably a lot of guys who are going through the conspiracy theory stuff about the, you know, the the the, the <laughs> Wuhan bat flu, um, whatever. And, um, and if you're going through that of going through the conspiracies and going through, oh, what is the truth here? And I'm trying to figure out the truth. Stop. I understand. And to some extent, I also believe several <laughs> of the conspiracy theories, but if you are masculine, you'll be indifferent to those conspiracy theories as of now, because there's nothing you can do about it other than perhaps just simply sharing material that you believe to be true 100%. If you believe something to be true 100%, there's nothing wrong with sharing it on your social media if you don't have a business. okay. If you have a business, I wouldn't share the thoughts of conspiracy theories because it might mess your, your business up. But understand that it's not important right now for you to be focused on those things. And you might be on lockdown and you might be reading a lot and studying these conspiracy theories, but it's feminine to be doing that at a time when you should be working, servicing, getting money so that you can buy Bitcoin and buy gold and buy silver. That's the most important thing you can do right now if you're in the position you're in. And trust me, most of you guys are not in a position of influence where you can truly make a dent into the, the conspiracy theories, some of them being true. And since you can't make a dent, a proper dent into them, you've got to be prepared for that day when you are able to make a dent into it, which only is possible if you've got the financial means to do so. It's kind of like a presidential race. There's people here who've got tons of money, all right, and they use it in order for them to accomplish their purposes. In order for us to counteract that, the only way we can do so is by becoming massively rich ourselves and creating a network of rich people collaborating to make sure that we retain our freedoms, right? The only way we can accomplish this is if we're all rich, freaking stinking rich. And that's the thing that you should be focused on. That's the masculine thing to do right now. Forget the conspiracy theories. Forget everything else. Focus on developing yourself. Focus on your money situation and building up your wealth. And that's when you'll make a true dent in all of these things. Um, let's see. Adam Muhammad said, Joseph, brother, please answer this question. Uh, let's see. I'll ask, let's see. I recently gave my life to the Lord as my savior. And I'd like to know about semen retention from a biblical perspective. Is it wrong to retain after sex with your wife? What are your thoughts? Um, sometimes <laughs> let's see. I send me a DM on admin of high value. If you have specific questions, then they need specific answers. Um, bro, would most girls even be up for three girls in love? They won't be up with it with who you are right now because who you are right now sucks. <laughs> so no, it's not. It's like you saying, um, would most people give me uh, $10,000? 
No, they wouldn't. It's because you don't have anything of value that would uh, allow you to charge $10,000 for something you have to offer, right? It's, it's like, yes, there are women out there who will do three girls in love for sure. Are you saying that if Justin Bieber, okay, obviously he's married now and Christian, blah, blah, blah. But are you saying saying that he could not go out and, and, and if he just stated on the live stream on Instagram, I want three girls, but they need to be best friends forever. And I'm going to create harmony. Do you not think that there's going to be girls who say, I want to, I want to, of course there's going to be right. It's ridiculous to think that there's not three girls who would make it work because he's massively high value. <laughs> right. So that that's the whole point. The only reason why you don't believe three girls in love is possible is because you are not high value right now. The higher value you are, the more masculine you are, the more you realize, oh, wow, there are tons of girls who want to be with me. That's crazy. So, um, yeah. So I, I think next time I'm going to talk about religion. I'm going to talk about straightforward, straight from my heart, what I think about all religious movements. And I'm going to be very specific about it. So I hope you tune in approximately 47 hours from now. I'll see you in the next one.